Welcome back to my fourth tutorial for My Memory Suite digital scrapbooking software by Polaroid. I'm Leslie, also known as Took of the Paper Took Craft blog, and in this fourth tutorial I'm going to show you how to layer decorative papers in various shapes. If you've missed my three previous tutorials, especially the first one that gives you a tour of the software's features and capabilities, be sure to check them out on my blog at craftblog.picktook.com. In the previous tutorials, I've showed you how you can add additional content to the program's directories and use quick pages. This tutorial is just a quickie, and it's going to show you a little trick that will help you achieve that layered paper look. Let's look at an example page. This was our first page of our tutorial album. But let's look at, for example, the second page. Notice how there are various paper types, such as this round um, shape that's got a, um, a decorative paper on it. Um, and then this background paper here, which is a big rectangle, and this decorative paper here, which is a rectangle. These are all layered papers in different shapes. Just like here on the front cover, we've got various shapes, various rectangular shapes of background papers that are layered on this page. So how can we achieve this? Well, typically, because these are background papers, you would think of those, you would add those as a background. But if you go to backgrounds and you add a background, this background will only change the main universal background for that page. You cannot add additional backgrounds in the same way that you normally add the regular background in the background tab here um, to create layered papers. So if we can only do it that way, how do we layer background papers like they've done in these examples? So it took me a while to figure this out, but it seems like it's just a simple trick. Select the background that you wish for the entire page. Let's make a new page, new blank page to, sh to show you this. So for this, what you want to do is let's just choose the universal background that I want for this whole page. So I'm just going to choose um, a designer template. I'm going to use a paper from the Alaskan Ice um, set that I downloaded for free from my friend Kimberly over at starscraps.blogspot.com. So I'm just going to choose one of her papers and use that. And I've set that as my universal background. Now if I want to layer background papers from her set on top of this, this is what you're going to want to do. You're going to add those papers as new photo boxes. That's what I said, add photo boxes. If you remember from previous tutorials, that means we go to the Photo tab, which is here, and we're going to click the button that says to add a new photo box. So add photo box is right here. I'm going to click it, and as you can see, it's going to pop up a little box on my page. I can manipulate this box, though. I can change the shape. I can change the size. If I want um, it to be a big rectangular shape, I can do that. Sometimes I'll do something like this where it's the full screen and maybe I want that to be over here. I can also change the photo shape however. Don't forget that down here at the bottom of the photo tab if you click photo shape you can choose the shape. So if I wanted a big round circle to be in the back, to be my, my layer in the back, then I would simply create that shape however I would like it, however large I would like it to be or small I would like it to be. Once you have your first paper layer, the size and shape that you want, and wherever you'd like it on the page for now, um, you're going to double click to add where it says to add a photo to this box. So we're going to double click, and instead of adding a photo, unless your, your goal is to uh, um, layer photos specifically, um, instead of selecting a photo, we're going to navigate into the directory where we have various decorative background papers stored. Now I'm already there as you can see, but for me, don't forget, that's going to be in C, Program Files, My Memory Suite, Backgrounds, and then you go from there, um, usually underneath the um, designer backgrounds, and wherever you have your background stored in that directory is where you're going to navigate to. I navigated to the Alaskan Ice directory that I have in my backgrounds uh, folder. Um, now it's just like adding a photo. Select the background paper that you want to fill in the shape and voila. So I'm going to choose this one and say OK. And it'll take a moment and it's going to fill the shape and it'll show you what that's going to look like. And you can sometimes you can manip manipulate it just a little bit and say OK. And it will add that shape as a paper shape for you. Simple as that, right? So you can do this as many times as you like. Um, 
You can add as many new layers as you want by adding more photo boxes. Remember, every time that you add a new item to your page, it's, the, it's a new layer and it's going to be closer to the top. So you might want to plan ahead a little bit. If you want the big circle to be the furthest layer back, do that one first and then build upon that from there. So if I wanted to add a different shape here, let's say I wanted to do something tall and skinny like this and put it here, then I could double click again, choose a new background here from her selection and say OK and it will fill the paper into that shape. And you can move this around however you'd like. And it will fill that in for you. Um, remember that as an added realistic touch, you can add drop shadows to some of the layers on top to make them appear to be truly layered. So this layer here, I could add a drop shadow to it by clicking drop shadow. I can either use the default, which I normally do, or you can change that up again and say OK. And so it really makes this paper seem like it's on top of the others. You've got a little bit of a shadow here. So you could just keep adding layers as you need to. Remember, you can always change the order of your layers. If I suddenly decide that I want this layer behind the circled layer, I can just send it backwards and it will go behind. Um, you may want to change your shadow then and, and put the shadow on this layer instead of the back layer. So I could do that as well. I could go in here and take away the shadow and then add the shadow to this one click drop shadow and there you go so you can just keep doing that now similarly um, you are also able to achieve the layered look by adding backgrounds as embellishments remember when we added new um, outside images to your programs directories we talked about adding them as embellishments um, you can do that with backgrounds as well however just be aware that the reason why I have you choose add a photo box is because you're able to make the shapes that you want before you actually add the background. If you add the background first and then try to manipulate the size and the shape um, afterwards, sometimes you end up sh um, misshaping the background a little bit. It stretches when you resize it once it's already been added. So it's best to add a photo box first, mess with the size and the shaping that you want first, then add your background so that you're not stretching your background uh, later on. So that's my example there, and that's it for today's cookie tutorial. I hope it helped you learn a new little trick with this amazing software. Don't hesitate to email me or post a comment on the tutorial blog entries if you have any questions, and I'd be happy to help you as best I can. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials or things you'd like me to demonstrate with my memory suite, I'd love to hear those suggestions too. I'll see you at my blog, craftblog.pinktuke.com. Thanks for watching, and take care.